So in this video, we're going to do a work, worked example for finding the extrema of a function of two variables. So we want to find the absolute extrema for our function f of x, y equals 5 plus 4x minus 2x squared plus 3y minus y squared over the closed bounded region bounded by y equals 2, y equal x, and y equal the opposite of x. And the first step is to get an idea of what this bounded region looks like. So the bounded region is going to be a region in the xy plane. And then we can think about the z-axis is coming out of the board at us. Even though we usually graph functions of three variables kind of in this format, it's going to be easy to think about it in this format and then kind of move it over into the 3D system. So y equal 2 is going to be a horizontal line like this. y equal x and y equal the opposite of x. Those are lines that look like that. So the closed bounded region is going to be this triangular region right here, bounded by the line y equal 2, y equal x, and y equal the opposite of x. So if I just draw in a rough picture of it, it's going to look like this. And if I think about it in how we usually draw things, it's going to be this region down, ooh, that's horrible, a region down here in that xy plane. Looks, looks like that. So we're going, to need, uh, we're going to need to know these intersection points. Those are going to be candidates. So remember, when we're talking about our closed bounded region and we're looking for global extrema, the extrema can occur at critical points. They can occur at the corners of our bounded region and they can occur along uh, the traces that are formed by our bounded region in the xy plane. They're, they're, it causes traces on the surface that we're working with and we have to take all of those into account. So the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is find the critical numbers for our function. And then once we find the critical numbers for our function, we need to make sure that they actually live inside of the bounded region R. If they don't live inside the bounded region R, then we don't need to assess them as part of, the, uh, as part of finding the global min and global max. So to find the uh, critical numbers or critical points, because we're working with a function of two variables, I need the partial derivatives with respect to x and y. So the partial derivative with respect to x is just going to be 4 minus 4x. And 4 minus 4x will equal 0 when x is equal to 1. And the partial derivative with respect to y is going to be 3 minus 2y. <clears throat> so we set 3 minus 2y equal to 0. And that's going to give us, when we solve it, 3 halves equals y. So the critical point for our function f is the point input 1, input 3 halves for y. So this is our ordered pair that is the critical point. And then the question is, does the critical point lie in the region we're working with? In this region, if we think about the boundaries, this point right here is the point zero, 0, This point right here is the point 1, 1 on the line Y. Oh, sorry, this is the point. This is the point 2, 2, because this is the line Y equal 2. And this is the line Y equal X. So this is the point 2, 2. And this point right here is the point input negative 2, output 2. Y is equal to the opposite of X. So the point one three halves, the question is, is it inside this region or is it outside of this region? Well, if you draw the line y equal one through here, that would correspond to the point one one, and up above it, we would get the point uh, one two, and the point one and three halves is between the point uh, one one and one two so the point one three halves actually does lie inside of the region right about there so here's our critical point so we're going to look for the global we're looking for global extrema so we'll need to analyze our function value at the point input one output three halves but note some other places that we have to deal with each corner 
on the bounded region has to be dealt with separately. So we need to deal with the point zero zero. We need to deal with the point input two output two. And we need to deal with the point input negative two output positive two. Those are the, uh, those are the corners of our bounded region. And then once we deal with the corners of the bounded region, let me draw the bounded region in a little bit better. Stop, my alarm's going off. Once we deal with the corners of the bounded region, we have to deal with the traces in the surface that occur in the planes that are perpendicular to the boundaries. So the way that we do that is pretty straightforward. It's just a little bit tedious. Uh, this line right here is y equal two. So if we wanna know what the function f of x, y looks like above the line y equal two over this bounded region, we just plug y equal two in for y. So we look at the function f of x comma two. So what does he look like? Well. Everywhere we see a y, we're going to replace it with a 2. So we get 5 plus 4x minus 2x squared plus 3 times 2 minus 2 squared. And that's going to simplify to 5 plus 6 is uh, 11. 11 minus 4 is 7. So we're going to get 4x minus 2x squared plus seven. Now, now you can see this is simplified to a function of a single variable. And what we want to, what we want to know is above this line, in the trace above that line, is there a place where the derivative is equal to zero? Because that, the derivative of this function right here, where that's equal to zero, because that will be a place that we need to check to see if it's a global maximum of the function f of x, y in the, in the region that we're working with. So I take the derivative f prime of x comma two, so we're holding uh, y at two. And so the derivative is going to be four minus four x, and that's going to equal zero when four minus four x equals zero when x is equal to one. So we need to check the point input one output, we're holding y constant at two. That's a place that's going to be a candidate along that boundary. And then we'll walk through and do something similar for the other two boundaries. So uh, we're going to look at the function f of x, y, but one of the boundaries is y equal x. So everywhere we see a y, we'll replace it with x. So I get the function 5 plus 4 times x minus 2x squared plus 3 times y, but now we're working along the line y equals x to see what the surface looks like above it. What does the trace of the surface look like above this boundary line? So we do three times, not y, but three times x minus, replace y with x, we get minus x squared and then simplify. So we get five plus four x plus three x is plus seven x minus two x squared minus x squared is minus three x squared. And now I'll take the derivative to see if there's a place where on that trace we get a tangent line that uh, that is flat or horizontal. So f prime of f of x x is going to look like whoops f prime of my function of x is going to look like seven minus six x, and seven minus six x is equal to zero when seven equals six x, or seven six is equal to x. So we get the point input seven sixth, output seven sixth. And that's gonna be that's gonna be a point on this line right here. So it's definitely in the bounded region. And then we have to play the game one more time, so we'll give ourselves a little bit of space. And we're going to play the game one more time with the other boundary line. So y equals the opposite of x. So we're going to plug in y equals the opposite of 
x into our function, so we're going to do the function f of x comma opposite of x. Everywhere we see a y, replace it with the opposite of x, and that'll tell us what the trace in the surface looks like above this boundary. So we go 5 plus 4x minus 2x squared plus 3 times the opposite of x minus the opposite of x squared, and then simplify 5 plus 4x minus 3x is just going to be plus x, and this is going to be minus 2x squared minus x squared is minus 3x squared. And again, look at its derivative. The derivative of that is going to be 1 minus 6x, and 1 minus 6x is equal to 0 when 1 is equal to 6x when a sixth is equal to x. So we get the uh, we get the point one sixth, the opposite of one sixth, as another candidate for our global maximum, and that's all of the candidates I've taken care of. Finding the critical point, I've also found the points where boundary lines intersect, and then I found the derivatives along each of the three boundary lines and set those derivatives equal to zero to see if there are places along the boundary lines where we get the horizontal tangent line. So we're looking for places like this right here because that will be a candidate for a high point on the curve. And once we have those, uh, these possibilities for the global extrema, it's just a matter of calculating the function at those values and seeing which of the outputs is the biggest and which of those outputs is the smallest. So you'll take those ordered pairs and you'll punch them into the function. We're going to calculate the function at the point one three halves. We're going to calculate the function at zero zero. We're going to calculate the function at two two, at negative two two, at 1, 2, at 7 sixth, 7 sixth, at 1 sixth comma negative 1 sixth. And we're going to get those outputs, dun dun, dun dun, dun dun, dun dun, and one of them will be the biggest and one will be the smallest. You can uh, do a little bit of th uh, critical thinking to see if you can rule any of these points out, maybe by looking at the function and how the function's playing out. But otherwise, at this point, it's just it's just going to be brute force at this point. Or, 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 if you graph it in GeoGebra, for example, so if I go, let's go escape. Let me escape this for a minute. I hit escape or keep that. If we pull GeoGebra open, so one way to do this so we don't have to just really grind. One way to deal with it would be, let me get a new window. Don't save that. One way to deal with this would be to actually type the function you're working with into GeoGebra. So f of x, y equals, and then we do 5 plus 4x minus the 2x squared plus what is it? 3y? 3y minus y squared and hit enter. So here's the, here's the function that we're working with. And then we can actually take down here in the input bar. So if I go, let's go options, font size, let's make it stupidly small, or large I mean make things big so we can see it. So if we've got the critical points that we had right here, uh, one three halves for example, we can just plug it into the function. So I have f of x, y sitting here. So f of, we could evaluate it at one comma three halves and the input bar would be one way to do it and it'll output the numbers here so we could kind of quickly get it that way. We could also use the computer algebra system window instead. So if we use the computer algebra window instead, I don't need to see the graph. We could plug the computer, we could plug the points in using the computer algebra system. 
So we have ordered, you just go and evaluate. So the function's name is f and then put the ordered pairs in. For example, 0 comma 0 and then hit enter and it will go get the output f of 2 comma 2 is 7, f of negative 2 comma 2 is another one of the ordered pairs, f of 1 comma 2 is 9, f of 7 sixth comma 7 sixth enter 109 twelfths and then we get and again you just do it for each of them and then analyze these to see which one is the biggest if you do it in the input bar so like if I did f of 7 sixth 7 sixth in the computer algebra window it's always going to give me uh, an exact output and if I do it through the input bar as an example 7 I should have my cheater readers on right now. I'm struggling. Seven sixth, sixth. If I do it down in the input bar, it's always going to give me a decimal approximation of the number. When I do it in the computer algebra system window, it's going to give me the nice output here. So if you're trying to kind of quickly compare things, doing it through the input bar and getting the decimal approximations, if you're going to have fraction outputs, um, might be uh, might be an advantageous way to do it. But that's how that's that's how you do it. You just uh, find the candidate points, and then evaluate the function at each of the points. One of the outputs will be the biggest. One will be the smallest, and life is good.